thank you, Bill and uh, Matt and James. We can't ever see James because he's uh, behind the uh, sacred screen back here. Uh, and Danny uh, Clark was not able to be here this morning. And Danny, we were blessed to have you. And Larry, thank you for your playing this morning. I'm going to try to, we've got two different mics running here. Can y'all hear okay on this one? Better on the other one. Bill, can you go turn this one down while I turn this one on? <laughs> By the way, if y'all know of anyone who um, might be interested in running sound or our uh, live stream, please uh, let me know. Or if you would like to do it, uh, we could possibly um, connect you. Troy uh, has some uh, health issues with it within his family, and he is not able to be here on Sunday. Uh, and and so we're really in need of two different people. But if 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 there is one person who can troubleshoot both, that would be great. We're also exploring this next week of getting our sound and everything moved back down to the floor level, so that if it's just Bill and me, we can run back and forth to turn sound down or do whatever we need to do. Um, and I think he'll have this other one off here in just a second. Well, don't you just love a Sunday about sheep? I, uh, I would really like to one day on Good Shepherd Sunday or on this Sunday uh, to have some live sheep in here. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, I think we could work that out just right before we change the carpet out in here. Uh, that might be, might be a good... Hey, thank you, Danny. Um, but twice a year, we get sheep in our readings for worship. It's as if someone out there plan, who plans the lectionary knows that we need at least two good times a year to hear Scripture like Psalm 23. That maybe somebody out there who puts all these together knows how much we need to be reminded that the Lord is our shepherd. The beautiful 23rd Psalm, how many of, for you, how many of you, uh, for you, is this your favorite Psalm? How many of you, this is uh, the only one you know, <laughs> Okay, it is, it is kind of the psalm, the go-to psalm uh, that we use. And, and it remains popular, especially at times of distress. We hear it when we really need to hear it. Or burnout, or sickness, or death. If you're in the hospital and I come to visit you, chances are I'm going to pick Psalm 23, depending on what kind of situation you're in. Um, there are other scriptures that we use, but it seems like for everyone, most everyone, even when I was a hospice chaplain and working with people who weren't Christians, they found comfort in the 23rd Psalm. But people throughout the ages have sought and found comfort in its poetic journey from green pastures and still waters through the valley of death, and then to an eternal dwelling in the house of the Lord. Beautiful imagery, isn't it? Sitting here in our inner city context of pavement and urban density, we know very little about sheep. But we find ourselves identifying with them as we read and hear these memorable words. We bookmark, frame, memorize, and perhaps even tattoo this psalm out of our love for it. And also because we know how much we are like sheep. Aren't we? You ever feel like a sheep? Vulnerable in this world and much in need of a shepherd to guide, to rescue, and to care for us. Well, each week, there are usually several videos that go viral in social media. Most of them recently have been difficult to watch, right? But from, we have one from this week that has gotten a lot of laughs. And uh, its star isn't someone dancing. It isn't a bear 
encounter, a cat being a cat, Debbie. You probably have contributed more cat viral videos to YouTube than anybody. No? You keep yours private. And it's not a monkey brushing his teeth, although those are good to watch too. It's a sheep. And I think if all goes well, I'm going to be able to show it on these screens. So bear with me for just a second and let's see. Maybe you've seen this. It's a short video, so watch it here. I think it's just going to, oh, there's the slow-mo, yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to try to go on to the next slide here, if I can get this to work. We laugh at that crazy sheep, but maybe we are really just laughing at ourselves, right? Chances are we've been there, haven't we? Haven't you been there? Do you feel like that sheep? When I first saw that this past week, I, I just thought, there I am so much of the time. A sheep in trouble, stuck in the pitfalls of life, freed by a good shepherd, only to run right back into trouble. And so we really do need a good shepherd, don't we? The reading from John's Gospel this morning reminds us of God's awareness of our need for a shepherd. We hear Jesus identifying Himself to His followers not only as a shepherd, but as the good shepherd. There are some shepherds out there that aren't good, right? Right? His followers understood themselves, their identity as Israel, as God's flock. And they were beginning to understand what Jesus meant as He referred to Himself as their Good Shepherd. Especially decades later when John's Gospel was written. As it was written for a church living in full crisis mode after the Romans laid waste to Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. I mean, everything that they love, everything that's familiar to them has been destroyed. The place where they recognized God coming to meet with them was gone. Destroyed. If ever they felt like vulnerable sheep in need of a shepherd, it was then. And John wanted his readers to reflect on how Jesus was still the Good Shepherd. Yeah, all that stuff has happened John writes, but he is still the good shepherd. One who demonstrated his goodness in the fact that he laid down his life for his sheep. So I guess in that video, the shepherd would be the one that jumps into the crevice so that the sheep would not fall into the crevice or to rescue the sheep from the crevice. And John describes Jesus as the one who laid down his life for his sheep. And by the way, not just his sheep, but the sheep of other flocks, right? For, for all sheep, this good shepherd. Well, like the people John's Gospel was written for, we live in a world with powerful empires, violence, destruction, and disease. We have experienced the fragility of our human existence in this last year more than ever in recent history. We've also felt this as Americans, seeing how close we came to losing our democracy. And many white Americans have become more in tune with just how fragile life is if you are black, if you are Asian, if you are indigenous or people, any person of color in this nation. 
as we recognized on Earth Day this past week, our planet isn't in such good shape either, is it? Headed quickly down a path that we have made that can make our planet inhabitable in the not-so-distant future. I could go on, but you get the idea, right? We are so much like that sheep stuck in the crevice. We have done a horrible job shepherding ourselves, haven't we? I mean, I know when I try to shepherd myself, uh, it doesn't end well. And I think that's true for all of us. And for us, as we live on this planet, in this world, we have not done such a good job of that. Don't you make a mess of your life when you take charge of it like you don't need help? I mean, we need a shepherd, one that is good. And are we aware of the kind of leadership and care that we have available to us from Jesus? I mean, as you came in this morning, as you sat down, were you at all aware in that moment or in this moment of worship or when you go out into this next week of the kind of leadership and care that is available to you as a sheep in God's flock? How wrong it would be for us to overlook His loving care for sheep like us. How deficient our lives would be without the words, the stories, and the expressions of Jesus to nourish us, to feed our souls and our bodies, and to get us through those valleys of death that inevitably come our way. How lost we would be without a shepherd who not only pursued us when we were lost, but also willing to lay down His life to save us. Well, as we have heard from the reading from 1 John today, the sheep and the shepherd emphasis is not just about us as individual sheep. What Jesus the shepherd has done for us has everything to do with what we do for the people around us, right? As John writes, little children. And we all are all like little children, aren't we? Uh, some say John is, is really uh, a little bit aggravated uh, with the people he is writing to, the churches, and the bickering and uh, some of the, uh, the problems that they're having in their congregations. He says, little children, let us love, not in word or speech. Because they were doing a lot of that. They were doing a lot of words and a lot of speech and a lot of other things. But he says, let us love in truth and in action. The author knew his audience, aware how messy things can get inside of their church. Isn't that true for all churches? So he reminds them of the kind of love that Jesus had for them. The kind that takes the form of laying down one life for another. And this is the kind of love that they were to have for each other. And this is the kind of love that we are to have for each other in our church. But also out there in the world around us. As we leave from this building, as we encounter people at the grocery store or uh, in line somewhere, or uh, as we go back to work or we go into our schools, wherever we are, we are to imitate the same love that led the Good Shepherd to lay down His life for the sheep. And out of our awareness of how this has been done for us, we are to go out and show love to others with truth and action. Remember when we looked at, uh, I think it was the second Sunday of Easter, Jesus came through the walls where the disciples were hiding out. And you know, it's kind of like, surprise, here I am. And, and John tells us He breathed on them. The Holy Spirit. He breathed on them. And He says, as the Father has sent Me into this world, so I now send you. Go out into the world and do what I've been doing. And what had He been doing? What did He just do? He just laid down His life for them and for the world. 
He says, as I've done that, now you go do that as well. It's not going to be easy, but it's what God has given us to do. It is what's going to change the world. And we are to do that as well. In truth and action. Is it really love if there's no action attached? Is it really love? The true test of our religion and our devotion to God is not what words we use or our statements about what we believe to be true, but what we do for our sisters and our brothers. And that's not just those gathered in our church buildings or in our religious groups. It's for everyone who among us today needs that kind of love. I think we all do. Probably the person sitting next to you or down the pew from you this morning, they need that kind of love. They need love with some action. And who out there, sheep outside of our church in this next week, could benefit from actions and not just words? Now that we have focused on sheep and shepherds a while, you may be wondering what any of this has to do with a fourth Sunday of Easter. Isn't it great to know that our risen Savior is the shepherd who laid down His life unto death for us all? He did it, just like He said He would. And isn't it even greater to know that He has risen from the dead? Hang on a minute. He has risen from the dead. Ah, you you got it. Y'all are staying with me that He has risen from the dead to shepherd us still, to lead us where we need to go, and to help us care for the sheep around us. Yes, we have a resurrected shepherd who is guiding our lives. He will do it just like He said He would. But what kind of sheep will we be? In this next week, in all the things that you have before you, the the things that you have to do, the difficult tasks, the easy tasks, the times when you're busy, the times when you're at leisure, what kind of sheep will you be? Well, wherever you are as a sheep, and whoever you are as a sheep, may you remember that you have a shepherd and that your shepherd is good. Let us pray. Oh, Good Shepherd, we give thanks today for we know how vulnerable we are. We know how prone to wonder we are. We know how stupid we can be. Jumping right back into the trouble that You just got us out of. And yet, You come to us with Your grace and Your mercy your forgiveness, your redemption. May we immerse ourselves in knowledge of that this morning. And as we go out into this week, may we carry it with us to share it with the people, the world around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.